Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and today's show is presented by Roan. If any man out there is looking to elevate or upgrade their dress wardrobe with some of the best dress shirts that I have ever worn, then what you need to do is use promo code CHAT to get 20% off on your order at roan.com slash chat. Now, coming up here on today's show, we're going to look into some trending Raiders rumors, some stories. We're going to look into the latest around Devontae Adams and whether or not he's going to get suspended. Josh Jacobs, could he potentially win the NFL rushing title? And I'm going to just say this. Don't give up hope right now on this 1-4 team. It's been a roller coaster. It's been up and down. But I promise you, I'm going to tell you something today, and you're going to be like, the Raiders might make the playoffs. Now, before we get into all of these stories here, friendly reminder to hit that subscribe button. I've been trying to get to 123,000 subs for quite some time, and I'm pretty confident I'm going to get it today. We only need 122 more, so if you're a diehard Raider fan that bleeds silver and black, hit that subscribe button. That way you never miss anything. Let's talk about Devontae Adams, and this has been the major headline around this team for Basically a week since the Raiders' Monday night football heartbreaking loss to the Kansas City Chiefs, Adams was charged with a city ordinance violation for his post-game shove against a photographer that, let's just face it, y'all know my two cents on that. Photographer also is responsible. A lesser charge than a state misdemeanor. He faces a fine of $250 to 1000 or a jail sentence up to 180 days or both. I have said multiple, multiple times that Devontae Adams is not going to do jail time, so please don't be worried about that. Ian Rappaport on October 16th did give a little bit of an update, though, which is the main reason why I'm giving you guys this information on today's show, and it's this. Raiders star wide receiver Devontae Adams is unlikely to be disciplined by the NFL until the legal process concludes. He'll remain on the field until then. That was what he tweeted out. Underneath that tweet, he linked an article and gave some you know, pretty interesting tidbits in there, which you guys are going to see right now. The league generally acts quick for on-field infractions to make clear a player's status for the next game, ruling on suspensions by Wednesday morning of a game week. Las Vegas is on a bye this week. Adams' situation, however, won't play out immediately, in part to a legal development that came on Wednesday when he was charged with a city ordinance, ordinance violation of assault, according to a Kansas City Municipal Court public information officer. Because Adams was criminally charged, his case is now considered a potential personal conduct policy violation, which warrants a league investigation. However, if the case is resolved in any way, legal charges are dropped, Adams pleads guilty, or any other outcome that concludes the situation, a resolution would come quicker, sources informed of the situation say. Now, if you're wondering, all right, where, when are we going to find out or when can we stop talking about this? It's probably not going to happen until the preliminary court date. So if you want, circle this date right now on your calendar, November 10th. This year, the court date is scheduled to be at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, so 11.30 p.m. Pacific Time for a lot of y'all out there. I might do a show around this. We're going to try to keep you guys up to date. But as it stands right now, the Raiders, the NFL, will not suspend Devontae Adams until that court date. And I'm hoping even when this whole court date is over, we don't get a suspension. I'm just saying right now. So what do you think, y'all? Do you think Adams will get suspended this season? Type that Y for yes, or I want you to type an N for no. Let me be very clear. If the NFL suspends Devontae Adams before everything that gets settled around Alva Kamara after Kamara literally was in Las Vegas and just <laughs> took a dude to the workshop, I'm going to be ticked off. I don't think he deserves to be suspended, and he better not be suspended. So hopefully, y'all are typing N with me. Coming up next here on the Raiders Report, we're going to look at Josh Jacobs and could he have a legitimate shot, like a realistic shot, at winning the NFL rushing title? That is the most rushing yards in the NFL for a player. We'll talk about that, but first, I want to show you guys here how amazing Roan shirts are. Now, major shout out to them because Roan's comfortable four-way stretch fabric provides breathability, and it just helps you move around a little bit. So I'm going to show you guys how well, like, do you see how much this stretches right now? Like, I don't know if you guys have ever, ever had a dress shirt, you throw it on, and it's all wrinkly and it's all crappy. That's not going to happen with the Roan dress shirt. On top of that, 
You never have to go to the dry cleaner. In my life, I'm going to be very transparent. I try to keep you guys up to date on the Raiders. I don't have a lot of time to go to the dry cleaner. With this shirt, you don't ever have to do that because it's machine washable. Now, you let it air dry, but it's machine washable. So with by using promo code chat, you're going to save 20% off. And all I need you to do is go to the link down in the comments. Go to the link in the description. Roan.com slash chat to save 20% off off your order. I would rather buy one Roan shirt than going to any other super store by going to another place and buying a three or four other dress shirts. You're going to save money, I promise you, by getting your hands on one of these. It's Roan.com slash chat, the perfect dress shirt, not only for when you're at work, but for when you leave work and you want to hang out with your buddies or take your girlfriend out on a nice date night. Shout out to Roan for sponsoring the Raiders Report. Let's all talk about Josh Jacobs here because – this dude has a legitimate shot to be the NFL rushing leader. I'd probably give it to just win babies at this current moment. Now, Nick Chubb leads the NFL with 649 rushing yards. Saquon Barkley at 616. Josh Jacobs at 490. Miles Sanders at 485. It is pretty impressive that quarterback Lamar Jackson of the Baltimore Ravens is on this list with 451. There is one thing that Jacobs, though, has that these other four players don't. Jacobs has only played in five games. All the other four have played in six. Now, when you look at it from an NFL rushing standpoint, yards per game, Chubb is still in first. Saquon is still at two. Really, nothing really moves the needle. Nothing changes whatsoever. The only reason why I'm going to sit up here and say, if you've watched the last two games for the Raiders, and then you compare that to the first three games that Las Vegas has played, Josh McDaniels' use of Josh Jacobs has been totally different. In the last two games for the Silver and Black, he has 49 carries, 298 yards, 6.1 yards per carry, three rushing touchdowns. Okay, so let's then take a look at his last two games, the average, okay? This is on an average basis the last two games. He's averaging 24.5 carries a game, 149 yards a game, 6.1 average, 1.5 rushing touchdowns. Now, I don't know about y'all, I love putting out these type of numbers, and if anybody wants to share this on Twitter, Instagram, add me as a collaborator because these numbers are going to be eye-popping. So what I did is this. You take Josh Jacobs' numbers from his first five games already, okay, and then you take his last two games average, and then you put that with a 12-game pace. So his first five games already, and then you add that to his last two games average with 12-game pace, that puts Josh Jacobs at 385 carries, 2,278 yards, 21 touchdowns. I'm going to be very blank. I'm going to stare at you guys in the eyes right now and just say this. Jacobs is not going to put up that type of numbers. I mean, it, it would be insane. It could be regarded as the best rushing season of all time. My argument, though, is this. Jacobs looks like an incredible back right now. He looks healthier. He looks better than he ever has before. And if the Raiders want to win football games, it needs to be on the back of Jacobs, who is fighting for a new job. He is fighting for a career. He's fighting for a contract. So my question to all of you is this. I don't anticipate 2,278 yards, but 1,600, 1,700 rushing yards for Jacobs? That's not out of the realm of possibility, especially if he stays healthy. So look into your crystal balls right now and guess how many rushing yards for number 28 for the silver and black this upcoming season. Next thing here on the Raiders report by Chat Sports. Shout out to Jeremy Chugs pushing all the buttons down there. Give Chugs some shout outs in the comments. Raiders playoff chances. I talked about it last week because I saw the New York Times. They gave him a 17% chance. When I saw ESPN gives the Raiders a 32 percent chance of making the playoffs and I'll give you some of these extra analytics but what I wanted to do here is simply roll through the AFC playoff standings as it stands right now if the playoffs were to start today these would be the seven teams in the playoffs Bills number one Chiefs number two Titans three Ravens four those are your division leaders and then the wild card teams which I'm kind of just at the point like this. This is where you're chasing the Jets at four and two after a big win over the Packers. The Chargers at three and two, but they got to play the Denver Broncos tonight on Monday Night Football. The Indianapolis Colts at three, two and one, and I've already seen that team play. To me, the Raiders are going to beat them in Week Ten. So those will be your seven teams. Now let's look at the teams essentially in the hunt because realistically, 
I think almost every single one of these teams could be in the hunt. Broncos at 11 there at 2-3. and three. They play on Monday night football, and as much as it pains me to say it, it honestly probably helps the Raiders out if the Broncos beat the Chargers because the Raiders, that one win that they have, is against Denver. Now, the other good news here for the Raiders is this. They play a lot of the teams that they're going to be matching up against here in these AFC playoff standings. So when you look at their final schedule, what are you going to see now on screen is essentially every single Raiders game and the percentage that ESPN has given the silver and black to win that game. So here we go. Week 7 at home against the Texans. ESPN says you got an 81.2% chance to win that game. All right, cool. Week 8, Saints, that's on the road. But, hey, you are still the favorite on that one at 54.8. Week 9 at Jacksonville. It's a coin flip. I saw the Hall of Fame game. Our backups actually outplayed the Jag starters. But the Raiders are favorites. Week 10 versus Indianapolis. 75.5% chance of winning that one. All right, so, so far... Raiders are 4 for 4 for being favorites. Cool, according to ESPN. Let's go to the next four games here. Broncos and in Denver, favorites. Seattle in Seattle, favorites. Chargers, favorites. At Rams, the defending Super Bowl champions, favorites. So we are 8 for 8. So let's keep this bad boy going. Week 15, Patriots, favorites. Week 16, Steelers. Week 17, 49ers. The only game of the Raiders' remaining 12 games where the silver and black are not favorites is Week 18 versus the Kansas City Chiefs. And I watched that Monday night game on Week 5. I still get sick to my stomach because I feel like the Raiders were robbed. You can't tell me that the Malcolm Coons call was an actual hold because, well, the last time that the Malcolm Coons hold happened was also against the Raiders back in 2015, and the same ref had the balls to do it then too. Maybe that ref should be investigated. So all I'm saying is this. There is a chance. Say it with me. Type it out in the comments. Say it at home. Look to a loved one. Tell your kids, call somebody up on the phone, a Raider fan, and say, there's still a chance that this Raiders team makes the playoffs. ESPN's giving you a 32% chance. The Raiders, according to ESPN Analytics, are favorites in their 11 out of their last 12 games. I'm not going to sit up here and say that they're going to win 11 out of their next 12, but just hearing that, doesn't it just make you feel a little bit better? Or if they don't end up winning a lot of those games... Josh McDaniels, bro, I'm coming for you, man. So what do you think here, y'all? What will be the Raiders' record at the end of the season be? What will it be? In my video that I put out last week, if you haven't checked it out, please do it. It's an updated look at the Raiders' overall record prediction. I go give you scores, all that kind of good stuff. It's on the channel. Check it out. But after seeing that, this team can still make the playoffs. So let me know, what's the Raiders record going to be this season? Now, you're probably watching this right now, and you're thinking, all right, well, that's it for today, right? Not so fast, sweetheart. We'll be live for Monday Night Football between the Broncos and the Chargers, Jeremy Chuggs and I. And like we always do, we're going to have some drinks flowing. We're going to try to bring you that tailgate atmosphere that you would get in Oakland, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, all that good stuff. And it's going to be rocking and rolling. And I got a very interesting super chat menu. Shout out to all of our awesome watchers over on Locals. They handpicked it for you guys. So if you're not doing anything tonight and you're like, man, I want to watch this Monday night game, but it's two teams that I hate, join the Raiders Sport. Join, join Jeremy Chuggs and I. We're going to have a hell of a time. So hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. And I'll see you all in a few hours. F the Broncos. F the Chargers. Go Raiders.